Before the video, I'd like to say thanks to the responses of constructive criticism to my tutorial with the Brotherhood of Steel. Your advice has been of great help and has also brought me to the decision to enhance the quality of these videos with explanatory commentary. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Frumentarius type build and roleplay as a devout follower of Caesar. I can't go over every single quest, but I have done my best to include every Legion side quest and decision, as well as a related dialogue with our Legionnaire friends. This build's special stats employ high strength, agility, and luck for maximum proficiency with melee and unarmed weapons, as well as endurance to survive combat encounters up close. Our character, Villa Martis, has unusually low intelligence due to min-maxing, but since intelligence doesn't affect the speech skill, and because he is meant to follow Caesar's orders blindly, I believe it suffices. Our starting combat skill is unarmed, which we pair with survival and speech. Legionnaires can't use addictive chems, so we will have to survive entirely off cooked meals and tribal remedies. Speech will come in useful in certain missions and is a must for a silver-tongued frumentarius the likes of Vulpes. Throughout the course of the game we will also invest in melee weapons, and we will have to get guns and explosives up to 50 each for the best playstyle. Built to Destroy is a vital trait for many different combat builds, including this one. Hot-Blooded is a bit less useful, but I felt no other trait would really fit the playstyle I had in mind. With that out of the way, we raid Doc Mitchell's house, find ourselves a stealth boy and sell all the necessary items to chat. We have to keep the mercenary's grenade rifle, throwing spears, Vault 13 armor and Vault 21 suit. The Vault 21 suit will be the clothing we wear for gaining reputation when turning in quests, or when Legion armor would turn NPCs hostile. We first make our way to the Good Spring Cemetery, where we pick up a snow globe and Benny's unique cigarettes. From here we sneak all the way to Bonnie Springs, avoiding Cazadors with the Stealth Boy, and once there the grenade rifle makes quick work of the vi Vipers camping there. Love and Hate is a good early weapon for an unarmed playthrough and will be useful until we buy better weapons. It is from here that we make an unusual turn to Black Mountain for NCR armor. We are stopped on our way by geckos, who are easily beaten up. We access Black Mountain from the direction we exit on a normal run to Vegas, and pick up armor from the Fallen Trooper. If we wear this in McCarran, they let us on the monorail and it's easy sailing to the Strip. Additionally, as a Frumentarius, we should always have the enemy's disguise ready. Once on the Strip, we immediately gamble the Ultralux, Gamora and the Tox empty. After cashing in our chips, we talk to Swank with sufficiently raised speech and evidence of Benny's crime, convincing him to aid in his assassination. Benny dies discreetly in his room, with the platinum chip looted off his body. The eyes of the mighty Kaisar are upon you. He admires your accomplishments and bestows upon you the exceptional gift of his mark. Any crimes you may have perpetrated against the Legion are hereby forgiven. Kaisar will not extend this mercy a second time. My lord requires your presence at his camp at Fortification Hill. His mark will guarantee your safe conduct through our lands. Seek Kaisar by way of Cottonwood Cove, south of Nelson. The Cursor Luculus will be waiting. Now it's time to finally meet the Warlord House. We finally witness the purpose of the Platinum Chip with our own eyes, but such power isn't meant to be in the hands of an old world lich king, and so Villamartis is already in the basement beating him to a pulp before the Securitrons can even boot up their weapon systems. I realize we were still by far short on the money to be spent on our gear, so I also gambled a bit of the Atomic Wrangler and stole as much merchandise as I had patience for from the Silver Rush. And yet, Vilmartis was still about 5,000 caps short of all three weapons I wanted to buy. So I settled on Gehenna and Sleepy Time and made a vow to come back for a two-step goodbye when I made enough money. Now it's time to make a trek from Good Springs to Nipton. Once again we meet Vulpes and Kulta, who explains the background of the town's destruction, which we can compliment him oh, for. Oh, I don't know if you recognize me from the strip, when I handed you the mark of Kaisar. I wasn't wearing a dog's head at the time. Don't worry, I won't have you lashed to a cross like the rest of these degenerates. 
It's useful that you happen by. I want you to witness the fate of the town of Nipton, to memorize every detail. And then, when you move on, I want you to teach everyone you meet the lesson that Kaisar's Legion taught here, especially any NCR troops you run across. Where to begin? That they are weak and we are strong? This much was known already. But the depths of their moral sickness, their dissolution, Nipton serves as the perfect object lesson. Nipton was a wicked place, debased and corrupt. It served all comers, so long as they paid. Profligate troops, powder gangers, men of the Legion, such as myself. The people here didn't care. It was a town of whores. For a pittance, the town agreed to lead those it had sheltered into a trap. Only when I sprang it did they realize they were caught inside it too. Yes, and herded them to the center of town. I told them their sins. The foremost being disloyalty. I told them that when legionaries are disloyal, some are punished, the others made to watch. And I announced the lottery. Each clutched his ticket, hoping it would set him free. Each did nothing, even when loved ones were dragged away to be killed. It has a stark beauty, doesn't it? I'm glad you can appreciate it. Now go, and teach them what you learned here. There will be more lessons in the days ahead. Vulpes only asked us to scare the hell out of the troops at Mojave Outpost, but a true legionnaire says Ave Kaisar and massacres all NCR cucks foolish enough to start shooting. Our act of terrorism does not prevent us from further internal sabotage of the NCR. After approaching Cottonwood Cove, we can return to Camp Searchlight to get a quest from First Sergeant Astor to plant espionage devices at the Legion foothold. Informing Centurion Aurelius of this profligate treachery lets us provide false patrol routes so that Astor's forces will be caught in ambushes by our brothers. Get moving, profligate! The things the profligates will build to spy on us like cowards with little machines. Find that officer and give him this old map of our patrol routes. The profligates will try to set up ambushes, and we'll be waiting for them. Wale! You're back. What can I do for you? Let's hear it. This is more than I could have hoped for. It almost seems too good to be true, but the details are all here. Looks like they're planning to shift their raids north of Vegas. I'll shift some of the Rangers and NCR patrols in that direction when they're free. Here's some caps for your trouble. You've done us a great service. Before we proceed upriver to Caesar's Fort, there is still one feat we can undertake to have him impressed. At Nelson, the Khanis Dead Sea informs us Caesar ordered him to stay put. Awe, why have you come to Nelson? My orders are to hold Nelson. So far, the enemy north of here has been too frightened to move against us. Why should it concern you? What stalemate? It is Kaisar's will that I hold this position, that I not advance. If you're so eager to see Camp Forlorn Hope fall, why don't you go attack it all by yourself? Well. That remains to be seen. Hello. Villamartis recognizes it is much more fun to storm Forlorn Hope and completely wipe it out. This glorious victory earns us a unique machete, a small taste of the gift Caesar will show us with him in the future. True to Kaiser. Yes? A glorious victory. You must be very satisfied. I'll send word of your achievement. Perhaps Kaisar will see fit to send another Count of to occupy the camp. Here, take this. My blade. It was a gift from my centurion upon the defeat of the Sundog tribe. 
true to Kaiser. Now the time has finally come to meet face to face with Caesar, Lord of the Legion and conqueror of 86 tribes. From the moment we speak to the main gate guard, it is also forbidden to use any chems or intoxicants as to not be seen as lesser than the other legionnaires. Caesar is impressed by our accomplishments and has a task for us. So, I finally get to meet the courier who's caused so much trouble for the new California Republic. You spread word of the massacre of Nipton, just like Wolpe has asked you. You turn Camp Forlorn Hope into a mass grave. The profligates still hate me more than they hate you, I think. But I've been at this longer than you have. I get it. We share a common enemy. And now you come before the mighty Kaiser to what? Offer your services? Maybe I should have you struck blind so my face is the last sight you ever behold. Look. You do know why I wanted to meet you, right? A man nearly kills you, so you track him across the breadth of the Mojave? You arrive on the strip and waltz into the Lucky 38 like someone left you a key under the doormat? You assassinate the head of the chairman in his own casino and get away with it? Then something happens to Mr. House's robot, some kind of military upgrade? But the topper, the coup de grace, Mr. House dies while you're visiting him at the Lucky 38. When you set your mind to something, you get results. I like that. The question is, are you ready to get started? I like the servile attitude. Keep it up. The time is fast approaching when my legion will assault the Great Dam and invade the West. Before that happens, I want Mr. House erased from the picture. Not just the man you killed, but what he left behind. His legacy. Down the hill, at the west edge of camp, is an old building. It was here when the fort was taken in 2277. Inside the building is a hatch. And inside that hatch are two steel doors that bear the sigil of the Lucky 38 Casino. Now that same sigil is on the platinum chip you were carrying. Isn't that interesting? Even more interesting, there's a slot about the same size as the chip on the console that opens the hatch. So you know what I think? I think the platinum chip opens those doors. Doors that can't be pried open, or drilled open, or blasted open. Because all that, I tried. I want you to destroy whatever you find in there. And then I want you to come back here and tell me about it. So go to the building and take this fucking platinum chip with you. My legionaries will meet you there, with your weapons and equipment. Goodbye. As Caesar commands, Villamartis obeys and destroys the generators in the bunkers with spears. The base releases sentry bots to stop us, but even they are not enough to bring down a resourceful Frumentarius. I felt the ground shake a while ago. I'll take that as a sign you've got the job done. I've read Mr. House's obituary. Had a high opinion of himself, didn't he? With Mr. House out of the way, I can focus on smoothing out a few lingering complications elsewhere in the Mojave. First up are the boomers of Nellis Air Force Base, a tribe so reclusive it lobs artillery shells at anyone who comes near their settlement. I want you to offer them an alliance with my legion. My terms are simple. Target their guns against the NCR side of the dam when I assault it, and they can keep their freedom. If you find they aren't amenable to this offer, destroy them. Good. Your first challenge will be to reach their settlement without getting blown up. After that, it should be easy. Having completed our first task for Caesar, we can also talk with Vulpes and Lucius. Assuming you're really on our side, of course. There's a gambler, Martina Grosbeck, who has a knack for learning other people's secrets and passing that information along for a price. The Omertas, who run Gamora, have become suspicious of Martina's frequent visits to their casino. Soon they'll pay her a visit of their own. 
Good. Martina frequents the Vault 21 gift shop on the Strip. Hurry along, and she still may be in one piece by the time you get there. It is a great honor for anyone outside the Legion to get an audience with Kaiser. It's a tradition in the Praetorians to specialize in unarmed combat, because weapons can break or jam when needed most. However, our unarmed techniques favor offense over defense. We can charge the enemy and flatten him with our first strike before he can react. Of course. This will take some time, and I'm not a forgiving teacher. Yes. Do you have something to report? We recently obtained an artillery weapon, but we don't have the part or the skill to fix it. The tribe calling themselves the Boomers is obsessed with such weapons, I've been told. You could probably find a spare firing mechanism there. Wally. Then, there is a bit of gladiator fighting we can do just to make sure Villamartis will be the talk of the fort True while he's Kaiser. away. You here to fight in the arena? Then you're talking to the right man. No, imbecile, that's not how it works. I set up the fights, then you go in the arena and fight. That can be arranged. You will be facing off against a couple of disobedient slaves. Not much of a challenge. But it might be entertaining to watch. Remember the rules. Light armor and machetes only. And, of course, to the death. Good luck. Hey! I'm no legionary, but I'll kill you all the same. You stood against a ranger in single combat and survived. Sorry, but there's no... Moving on, we return to Vegas to do some odd jobs for the king. This seems inconsequential at first, but if we complete GI Blues by helping Pacer eliminate Major Kiran's forces, the kings will harass the NCR in Freeside to the benefit of the Legion. After this, Villamartis recruits Rex through the quest Nothing But a Hound Dog. Rex is a fitting companion as he used to be Caesar's hound before being lost in battle. Before setting out to Jacobstown to cure the critter, we inform the Omertas in Vault 21 that Vulpes spies under the Legion's protection. The spy, however, only forwards information to Captain Curtis at Camp McCarran, a piece of information that will lead us to the next quest given by Vulpes. Dr. Henry tells us that he can perform surgery on Rex, but that a new canine brain will be needed. Lupa, the mother of all legion dogs, is the perfect specimen. Before talking to the Houndmaster at the fort, we can use our survival skill to teach Siri how to more efficiently make healing powder. If you're injured, I might have healing powder. I never finished... Oh, I've been using two roots for flour. Thanks to you, I'll be able to create twice as much healing powder per day. Here, come back in a day if you need more. Healing powder okay. will be a staple now that we can't rely on stim packs. We tell Vulpes we know that Curtis is his spy and that his informant is safe. Was there more for us to discuss? Excellent. Had you simply killed them, the Omertas would have sent another group after Martina eventually. You've saved me the trouble of coming up with a more permanent solution. And Martina is free to go about her business as usual. Well done. I know the Captain well. If you wish to be of service, go talk to him. Bear in mind that you are now responsible for guarding the secret of his true allegiance. If the NCR finds out, we'll know how that happened. Now to earn Lupa's ring and grant her effective immortality, we have to fight her in the arena, giving her an honorable death. Brother Anthony is pleased. The 
The last simple quest to be done at the fort is given by the child slave Melody, who wants us to retrieve her toy bear from Antony. Antony, recognizing our service to the Legion, gives the toy back, but to gain Legion reputation, we must tear Sergeant Teddy up in front of Melody. Hi! That's okay. I'll fix him. Can I have him now? Sergeant Teddy! We make the trip back to Jacobstown so Dr. Henry can heal Rex, with Lupa's brain giving him an extra 10 damage threshold. With his pet cured, Villamartis rushes to Camp McCarran. Now, I use mods here, but technically you can still do the quest Seelus Treatment if you reset your NCO reputation to neutral by talking to Ambassador Crocker, and then do some quests at different bases to become accepted. Although Seelus was a coward to allow himself to get captured, we can still we rescue him by side. sneaking in a silenced pistol, which we, he will use to escape. Now it's time to talk to Captain Curtis, who needs us to blow up the monorail without indicating him. First we tell Colonel Shu in an NCR disguise that will help him find the mole. Then we plant Curtis' explosive device in the cabin and watch the monorail depart. Afterwards we plant incriminating evidence in Private Crenshaw's footlocker. Finally, our only choice is to murder Crenshaw and report him as a spy and the one behind the monorail's destruction to Shu, turning in the quest to Curtis. This has turned out better than I ever imagined. This will pay dividends for the Legion for a long time to come. I was with Shu when the bomb went off. He'll never think to investigate me for it. I'll make sure Caesar himself hears about your success today. And take this, courtesy of the NCR. I'm sure they won't miss it. With that, we finally have enough money to buy the two-step goodbye from the Gunrunners, and minus the Tomahawks, our assortment of weapons is almost complete. Dealing with the Boomers is next in line. I completed a lot of different quests to raise my reputation in this playthrough. Usually it's enough to listen to the museum presentation, kill all the ants in Solar Array, and help Jack out with his love interest. You have to with the idolized reputation reached, Loyal sends us out to float the sunken bomber plane up to the surface of Lake Mead so they can repair Tetnalis. We do as he says and complete the quest, asking Pearl to aid the Legion in the upcoming battle of Hoover Dam. However, allowing the Boomers to remain this powerful means they will isolate themselves from the Legion afterward, meaning we have to trick the game by killing Pearl to get the best Legion-oriented Boomer ending. We have to grab the howitzer part for Lucius before we leave. Back at the fort, we fix up the howitzer and report back to Caesar and Lucius. I understand that you freed Silas before he could talk. I approve. Silas dishonored himself when he let himself be captured, and he'll pay the price for that. But the NCR didn't learn anything valuable. Have you brought news of the boomers? Good. Make sure they help the Legion when the time comes. As for your next assignment, I want you to forge an alliance between Kaisar's Legion and the White Glove Society. They used to be cannibals. I expect that information can be used to manipulate them. Go to... God damn it! What's it look like, you asshole? Fuck this! I'm going to lie down. Come back later. Tomorrow! You've proven yourself to be a true friend of the Legion. We have a safe house available to our agents in the Mojave. Here's the key. It's an excellent place to rest and store extra equipment. In addition, one of our veterans, Atticus, visits the house every few days. While he's there, you can acquire items useful for stealthy operations against our enemies from him. Well done. It will be very useful in the coming battle against the snipers the NCR will no doubt have hidden in the hills near the dam. Wale. Since we discussed the ending slides earlier, let's now make contact with the escaped convicts of Vault 19 so they can join the Great Khans who are allied to Caesar's Legion anyway. For this, we have to clear out the geckos in the basement for Samuel Cook, and then deliver his message to Papa Khan, which he accepts.
What do you want? I have some goods. The paths we're following are slow going, so you might as well keep your ears open and listen to what old Jed has to say. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in northern Utah called New Canaan. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpace Legate, was a New Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn legion. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpace Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others, to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribals started to talk. Said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place came legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe the Malpace Legate is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. We may have already heard tales of the Burned Man, Caesar's filled Legate erased from history. We may also have heard legends among the slaves that he walks New Canaan alive to this day. So if he really is alive, then killing him would be a virtuous but secret work for Frumentarius indeed. And the Happy Trails company is more than happy to take us with them to Utah. To our surprise, the caravan is ambushed by White Legs, a tribe that serves the same master as Villamartis, though neither knows it. A member of a different tribe comes to our rescue and makes our self-given mission incredibly easy as he will lead us directly to the legendary Malpais Legate. Arriving at the Angel Cave, we come face to face with the forgotten and shunned co-founder of the Legion. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Lake is to you. Welcome back. What can I do for you? I think that would put him and you in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No, he lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. Now you done it. With Joshua Graham and Paulo Stroke dead, our only hope out of Zion Canyon is to track down another new Canaanite called Daniel, who is in possession of the map. Though Graham was right and Caesar won't acknowledge his death at our hands, Villamartis will know in his heart that he was the one who killed the Burn Man in the name of the Legion. And so it was that the conflict between the new Canaanites and the White Legs was finally resolved. With Daniel dead, the White Legs soon overran Zion and drove the sorrows and dead horses from the valley. The White Legs plundered all of the pre-war buildings the sorrows had marked off-limits. Their squalor an affront to Zion's natural beauty. By year's end, 
Little trace remained that the sorrows had ever made the valley their home. After a long and troubled life, Joshua Graham finally found rest in Zion. In the end, his unswerving militancy had accomplished what the NCR's finest sharpshooters and Caesar's wrath could not. The new Canaanites took comfort in the belief that their brother's soul would again dwell in Zion at the end of days. And with that, the courier walked out of the history of the tribes of Zion and back to the gathering storm of the Mojave Wasteland. Back in the Mojave, Caesar has more tasks for us. First, we must use the White Glove Society's cannibalistic history as leverage to ally them to the Legion. Marjorie is reluctant, but with sufficient speech we get Mortimer to reveal he has a way to return the tribe to its tradition. Our speech comes in yet again in rescuing My the mistakenly captured Ted Gunderson, and convincing him and his father that the kidnapper's identity God is unknown. I then we have to travel outside Vegas to capture the true main course for Mortimer's men to collect. After a day of sleeping in Bon Vivant, Mortimer informs us of his success and we can talk to a much more open-minded Marjorie about forging an alliance. I prefer Mr. House, of course, but he may not be around forever. And the NCR will surely set back our cuisine. Tell your Mr. Caesar we are with him. The last time we met, I believe we were talking about the White Glove Society. Have you been successful in your efforts to recruit the White Glove Society? Good. It will be valuable to have allies on the Strip when Hoover Dam is taken. Now, as for your next assignment, I want you to destroy the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. It's not a full-strength chapter, mind you. The profligates... Oh. <clears throat> hmm. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Brotherhood. Them. Look for the Brotherhood's bunker around, uh... Hidden Valley. My, my scouts saw some things. I'm going to bed. We'll talk later. Next up is destroying the Brotherhood of Steel. I admit, this is one particular area where this build is lacking. But with perseverance and resourcefulness, we can take them down. Particularly hard are the three, make the five paladins who storm us at the bunker's door with Gauss rifles. If we can get past them, the best strategy is to storm level two and kill the head scribe before making it to the control room and quickly dispatching the elder and his paladins and then taking the head paladin by surprise. With all three keycards collected, the computer in the VR room will generate a password that allows Villamartis to blow the Brotherhood bunker to high hell. Has the Brotherhood been destroyed? Very well. This latest victory brings to a close my efforts to reshape the power balance of the Mojave. And not a minute too soon. I want you to join me in my tent. You and I are going to have a private conversation. All right, let's state the obvious. There's something wrong with me. The headache started a couple of months ago. They weren't too bad at first, but now they come frequently and they're debilitating. For the past two weeks, my left leg has been dragging. It's stiffer, hard to move. And you've seen me blank out. Lucia says I stare into space, blink a few times, then keep talking like nothing happened. So what's the diagnosis? Answer the question. Yeah, it does. So if you can't help me, who can? It's never had a functional diagnostic scanning module. Without that, it's useless for surgery. 
It's been said that the autodocs were standard equipment in the underground vaults where mankind survived when the bombs fell centuries ago. You can search the vaults, but every autodoc my legion has run across has been stripped for parts long before we found it. Some of my scouts did report an abandoned vault near Nellis Air Force Base. Overrun by ghouls, they said. Maybe the infestation has been there long enough to keep scavengers out. Why don't you go and see? Do that, and try not to take too long. Because we are neither a medic nor a lucky liar, we have to make a run to Vault 34 for a diagnostic scanning module. We easily plow through a horde of ghouls and return back to the fort to find Caesar in a coma. Kaisar sleeps, but doesn't awaken. I fear it is only a matter of days before death claims him. You will answer to me until such a time as Kaisar is able to resume leadership. Wally. With the scanning module installed, surgery is completed by the autodoc without any medical input from us, for which the dictator is grateful. I thank you for saving my life. The autodoc module you recovered did the trick. I trust this payment is adequate compensation for your troubles. Now, lest we grow sentimental here, the time for battle will soon be upon us. Legatus Linnaeus draws nigh. When he arrives, my legion will assault Hoover Dam. In the meantime, the profligates have prepared a welcome gift for us. The president of the NCR intends to visit Hoover Dam. That's what I like to hear. One of my frumentaria set up camp near Hoover Dam. His name is Cato Hostilius. Go to him. He'll have further instructions. The killing of profligates should never go unrewarded. I'll pay you a small sum per tag. How many? A good bit of hunting. Here's your payment. Was there something else you wanted to bother me with? Wale. You did well to give Kenturi and Aurelius the profligates listening machine. We'll butcher the troops they send to... Ah, wait. Name your business. Bur that would be worth... The light is a button that can interrupt detonation. We were too busy throwing ourselves to the ground to figure that out. To rearm the mine, we'd just press the button again. Simple. The profligates will regret that we learned this. For our final mission, before the assault on Hoover Dam, Caesar sends us to assassinate President Kimball with the help of Cato Hostilius. With 50 explosives, we can get an explosive device to plant on the President's vertebrae when it arrives. There's many different ways to complete this quest, but I decided to follow what the Legion Assassin does when you play this quest on the NCR side. We go into the utility closet to dress up as an NCR engineer and wait for the vertebrae to arrive. While Kimball is walking to the podium, we can climb onto the platform to plant the explosive. Now we sneak over to the closest intake tower and whack the ranger on top to start shooting at Kimball's veteran rangers with his rifle. 12 makes one for his vertebrae. When we may think he narrowly survived, the vertebrae explodes above Villamarca's head before anyone can capture a breath from his surprise attack. To leave the dam, we still have to get through some hostile NCR rangers, but at least I finally get to try out the tomahawks I found in Zion Canyon. Before returning to Caesar to start the Battle of Hoover Dam, we have one last lonesome road to walk. The Legion-affiliated dialogues with Ulysses are particularly interesting, so if you don't want to listen to them, feel free to skip ahead. There's their signal. Faint, but...
but there, charging ahead like the rest of our brothers, blood in your eyes. Her tales of you walking the Mojave, casting off a disguise, yet you carried that ship, determined to take it to Vegas, not Geysar. You and that ship deserve each other. 29 fewer coins than other traders have carried, by history's mark. I hold Legion to be my brothers, even as misguided as they are. And you, more so than most. Two-headed bear, NC. 
Aesir. They don't have symbols in the same way Legion does. They revere their mines and explosives, guns. That is their religion. Death from afar. Take pride in it. Pain makes for strange allies. The hate of the bear and bull shared across the battlefield, now turned against the divide. Few survived. Intact. Many NCR were already here when the destruction happened, keeping the route east open in fear of Kaisar. Fear of the Legion. The dam. That old world wall. The bear, NCR, couldn't be allowed to reach it easily. Long 15, Cayman, both bad enough. Kimbo, Kaiser, House. You'd think their whole world was that wall, cutting the Colorado. If I'd never laid eyes on it, never spoke of it. But once found, it was all Kaisar could see. That, and the flag beyond it, another symbol, big enough to challenge him. And the Divide, one of the roads to it. Legion was tasked with cutting that artery. If you can't kill the bear in one stroke, bleed it, starve it. That kind of murder. It's what any of the Legion would have done. Now, the Divide belongs to history. Tunnelers, predators that make their own roads beneath the ground here. Divide broke their sky, showed them the world above, and the scent of new prey. This lower death for the Mojave than bombs and fire, but they'll come for its people from where they least expect, below. Death will come from below. In the divide, need to watch the sky and the ground. Mojave will be easy prey for them. They'll start emerging throughout the Mojave in time. Might be years, probably less. They breed fast, hunting groups, more than enough to bring down the strongest in the Mojave, once they draw blood. Seeing them tear apart Deathclaws, Deathclaw might get some, but the rest will swarm it, tear it apart, like Denver hounds. Mojave and the Divide are the only places I've walked. Walked the East, too, before the bull came. Then, much like Mojave before the bear. Tribes, towns, clutching to life. Bull did a better job. At the end of the high road lies Ashton. It's Silo. That machine I'm with you. It can open it, wake it up. Like it did the one in Hopeville. At Ulysses' temple, we leave Eddie since he is worthless to us now that he has fulfilled his purpose as a nuclear code carrier. We remember Ulysses' quote of Caesar, kill no career. It is clear that we must seek a peaceful resolution during our confrontation with Ulysses. So you came, Frumentari, courier, whatever you are now, come to carry out Kaisar's law, his voice carries no weight here. You are too late. The Divide is awakening. The package and the message within have come full circle. The sequence has begun just as before. Except this time, the missiles will touch the sky instead of being locked beneath the ground. You've answered your own question. And you'll die with that question on your lips.
You don't see, listen, even when it's all around you. No matter if I nailed it into your head like a gift from Kaiser. You brought the divide to life, courier. You walked the road, brought the bear, then the bull, brought me, following your tracks. And when I saw the divide you made, I saw a second chance, a new way of thinking. My world, no longer the East. And you brought the West in that package, destroyed it all, nearly killed me, flesh and spirit. You've destroyed something larger than the bear, greater than the bull. And even when you could have turned away, you brought it again in that machine. You destroyed a nation taking its first breath. A place that could have been my home. Now, I'll destroy yours. I believed in what I followed then. Kill no courier. Kaiser's words. I honored them. Other couriers could have been legion, like me. Now, our allegiances are reversed. No. Now there is purpose. I believe you when you say you were careless. The divide, the chip, the machine you brought here. Many messages can be taken from that, intended or not. What I do now is an act of conviction. <laughs> Blame you? No. Learned from you. Both the weapon to kill a nation and the strength to do it. You showed me a road, a way to carry my message. You've already answered for what you've done. Now the flag you follow will answer for it. No, not the Mojave. The West. All that's been built since America died. Same symbols as before the war. Now a flag carried by a tribe of children. You walked the West. Didn't stay. You know the reason. The bear grows without structure, follows a symbol without knowing its history. Without NCR to support it, Vegas will fall to the Legion. That grave of lights back to dust and ghosts, as it was meant. After this, only one flag will remain over the Mojave. Let that one fly, or destroy itself. You destroyed your own homeland, seeing a nation burn. Didn't think that would matter anymore to you. There's a strength in that, lack of attachment. Still, you're here now. If there's no more answers you want, then we'll end this. There is conviction in your words. Enough to rival a legate. Perhaps, Kaiser, you believe what you say. If you feel I do not know the Legion's strength, then I will listen. History has proven this. Our history. You seek to use your own crimes to prevent mine. There is a strange honor in that. Perhaps the shadow of the bull does walk with you. The west, the east, they are not the divide, and nothing you can do can prevent the missile's launch. Convincing me changes nothing. It may be that as much destruction has been written in the earth here, you may build something else. As you built the Divide, you have spoken truly. There is a shadow of a nation behind you, the hope of a people. Yet it may not matter. The Divide still stands against us. Our enemy.
enemies gather outside, shadows of the bear and a bull. They will have found their way in, just as you did. It was always my intention. In case I could not kill you, the marked men would flood this place, cut off your escape. If we cannot prevent what comes, then let us make our stand here. Two couriers, together, at the Divide. After all the marked men have stopped swarming, it's time to make a choice regarding the nuke. Simply put, any hindering of NCR supply line is supported by the Legion, and therefore we only speed up the launch sequence. trail of the two couriers last message arced into the sky missiles fell on NCR and the long 15 caravan route beyond the Mojave outpost the road the courier had been walking when the tale began caravans and NCR outposts along the route were reduced to ash an old world gift from the Divide. As catastrophic as the damage was for NCR, the act made the courier stronger for having no history and no retreat. It said, war, war never changes. Men do, through the roads they walk. And this road has reached its end. When we return to the Mojave, we can see our handiwork on the horizon. Exploring the irradiated Long 15 isn't really a part of the Legion questline, but if you're sufficiently leveled it may be satisfying to kill Colonel Royaz and loot the plethora of ammo scattered about in military cases. And with that we catch our breath, repair our equipment, restock on ammo and recruit Rex to head to the fort to aid Caesar in his assault on Hoover Dam. For cinematic purposes, I will not offer commentary for the remainder of the video. Thank you for watching and enjoy the show. You dispatched President Kimball with real skill. Right under their noses, too. What a humiliation. My forces are in a position to assault the dam. Legatus Linnaeus has assumed command. Are you ready to go to him? To tell him to begin the assault? Good. In hoc signo Taurus Vinces. Report to Legatus Lanius immediately. He'll brief you on the plan of battle. Come back victorious, or don't come back. Legatus, a stranger arrives. One who bears the mark. Finally, Mars has accepted my sacrifices and unleashes me. You are the courier Lord Kaisar has spoken of. The slaughter begins then. In the past, the NCR has relied upon attrition, withering our numbers with ranged fire and falling back as necessary. Not this time. The dam contains tunnels to its heart, overlooked by the NCR now occupied by the Legion. When the battle begins, the NCR will find our teeth at their throats in a dozen places. There will be no attrition, no falling back, only carnage. Our forces are better equipped to take objectives than hold them. I do not wish to defend this place if another option exists. Our opponents follow a strict chain of command, which is both a strength and weakness. I intend to use you to strike at that weakness. 
Find the enemy commander, this General Oliver. Kill him or his resolve. Do this and his cowards will retreat, leaving the damn to us. Mars's eyes are upon you. Do not fail him, or us. Salway Courier, how goes the battle in the east? Good news indeed. If only the same could be said for the west. The enemy is much more fortified ahead, and have snipers set up at key positions, which keep our men pinned down. In addition, they've managed to beat back our men emerging from the intake tower ahead and secure it. If we could just get rid of those damn snipers, or release our waiting men in the intake tower, we'd have the manpower to storm their positions. Any assistance you can provide is welcome, and will mean more of our men to carve through the foe by your side. Ah, the outsider who gained our master's favor. You prove yourself as cunning as the rumors report. My men await in the tunnel below. I'm to divide them between the dam top and the tunnels that lead to the western power plant. Agree. If we take the power plant, this battle is over. I'll have my men focus their efforts there. May the son of Mars go with you.
The rest of the dam is fully under our control. A few pitiful holdouts remain, but their time is short. The General was the last source of concern. With their commander dead, the NCR will pull out of this region, allowing our conquest to continue westward, unopposed for a time. The Legion will swell with the number of slaves we will claim from this place, and the tribute we gather will fund further campaigns. Perhaps in time I will be granted the honor of conquering the land known as California, but for now we rest. Know that your efforts are appreciated and will not go unrewarded, but we can speak of that later. For now, come, we must see to the burning of the dead. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. Caesar entered the Strip as though it was his triumph. The Legion pushed the NCR out of New Vegas entirely, driving them back to the Mojave Outpost. The Legion occupied all major locations, enslaving much of the population and peacefully lording over the rest. Under the Legion's banner, civilization, unforgiving as it was, finally came to the Mojave Wasteland. The Legion marched over the Hoover Dam with the help of one who was as brutal and merciless as the worst of them, the Courier. Caesar honored him with a golden coin, minted in celebration of his contributions and distributed throughout the Wasteland. The Boomers defended themselves against many attacks from the Legion, but they eventually fell to the Legion's superior numbers. The Legion enslaved the Boomers and erased any memory from their existence from the Wasteland. The Fiends attacked Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam and suffered heavy losses. Caesar, unimpressed with their performance and their dependence on chems, had them exterminated. After the Legion's victory, Caesar, out of a strange respect for his old fellows, allowed the followers safe passage out of the wasteland. Reluctantly, the followers accepted the offer and abandoned Old Mormon Fort to the Legion. The Legion, preoccupied with its acquisition of New Vegas, scarcely took notice of the town of Good Springs. Many locals moved on, fearful of Caesar's long shadow. Only the old and the stubborn remained. As reward for their loyal service, Caesar forcibly integrated the Great Khans into the Legion. The sick and elderly were killed, the women sold as wives to ranking officers, and the tribe's identity was annihilated. Though many Great Khans mourned the death of their tribe, many more were ultimately satisfied with their revenge against NCR. Impressed with the King's continued attacks upon NCR citizens and soldiers, the Legion offered them the option of being assimilated into the Legion. The Kings refused and briefly became slaves in the Legion, but after a failed escape attempt, they were all put to death. With the transplant of Lupa's brain, Rex gained all of the donor's experiences traveling with the Legion. These melded well with his own memories of the Legion, and his new mind quickly adjusted to the myriad memories. And so the Courier's Road came to an end for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. <laughs>